Hey guys, and welcome to Tinker and Timmy's. So today, we are fitting this to that. What is this and that? This is an anode rod, and that is my hot water unit in the Jayco expander here. So what's an anode rod? An anode rod is a sacrificial part within your hot water unit that wears away so your hot water unit doesn't, essentially. So you can get two different types of materials in these. Magnesium, which this one is, or aluminium. So if you live in an uh, area or you're traveling within an area that has notably hard water, it will corrode the magnesium quicker than you might like. Um, anything under six months, the Suburban Manual recommends you try the aluminium rod. For me, I've changed mine out within about eight, 12 month intervals and they've been about 50% corroded, which I'm happy with. Seems to be a good amount because you want it actually to corrode. You don't want it to not corrode. You want something within your system to, for the water to corrode away, essentially. That's why we pop one of these bad boys in. Anywhere from six to 12 months, I'd be changing these out, even if you're not using the van. So even if it's just parked up, it's got water sitting in that hot water unit and it will still corrode this away. Um, unless you drain your water tank, you know, if you're parking up for a while, which is probably recommended if you're gonna be sitting it for extended periods of time. Um, but to drain the water tank in my unit anyway, it doesn't have a valve underneath. The easiest way to drain the water is to actually remove it. So, might as well replace it. So, part required, one anode rod. I've also picked up this unit here. It is one side for the anode rod, other side for the 240 volt element within the suburban hot water units, which I replaced about 12 months ago. Made it so much easier to get in because you need a thin walled socket. Just ask me how I know. Phillips head screwdriver, pops in the end there as your leverage. Welding rod or a coat hanger, Summon poker prodder to get in there to scrape some of the corroded away anode. Leaves like a calcium lime looking scale all over the tank. You want to get in there and give it a bit of poke and prod while you've got some water flushing through it just to get some, get the crud out. So, I'm not going to bore you for too long. Let's hook straight in and let's get into it. This is my hot water unit here. It's a suburban, about 20 litres gas and electric. So, safety tip. Before you're gonna be mucking around in, on the inside here, taking things apart, fiddling with it, make sure 240 volt is unplugged. There is a switch in here that will isolate it. Just unplug it, it takes 10 minutes. Unplugged, gas off, right? Because the switch for the gas is actually on the inside of this fan, so if someone walks along and flicks it while you're out here, you don't wanna be down here with your hands fiddling around while that flame turns on. So, gas off. 240 volt off, water off as well. It will be under pressure, and because it's hotter, it'll be slightly higher as well. So turn your water off, and even if the van's been parked up for a while, unless you've actually bled the water out, the pressure out of the lines, it will still have some residual pressure in here. So we can just go along and turn the taps off, or you can also just pull the pressure relief off in here, which I'll do now. We just pop that flap down. Pressure release up the top here. Got your gas componentry, your resets here for your electric and gas. You've got your 240 volt power. It's all the way tucked away. Where are you? There you are. Your 240 volt on and off there in the back corner. That's for your 240 volt element. And in behind this cap here is the 240 volt element. We don't have to get in that today, so that's just going to stay like that. And down the bottom here, that's your little anode. Spark for your gas, your gas burner, your gas flute, and down in there is the flame chamber. So, let's rip this puppy out. So first, we'll pull this. We should have a whole heap of water come out. Yep, so that's just relieving the excess pressure. That's what you want it to do. Hold that until the water stops. Happy with that. Let's pull that out. will just drain out until she's completely empty. Yeah, wow, look at that. So that's about as depleted 
as you sort of want to see it really. Perfect time to change it out. So while it's all just gushing out, I'm just going to get in there with my welding rod and just try and help it get the crud out. So you can see all this, yeah, that's what you're looking for. Get all that, that mess out. So I'll continue on with that and I'll get back at you when I'm when I'm done. Little tip while you're doing this and just scraping it out, there's plenty more stuff. Plenty more coming out. So while you're doing it, you can just crack your turn your water on slightly, and that will just keep trying to fill this tank and just keep it with a nice little flow of water just like you got coming out now. Um, yeah, if you just keep a little bit of flow of water, it just helps as you're pulling all this stuff out. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with how clean it is now. A lot of crud come out, as you can see in the bottom there, and all over the floor. So, I'm going to back this one in. This is the new one, we'll compare it to the old one. Yep, same, same. But not depleted, perfect. One thing I noticed, the beauty of um, this genuine Suburban one, it comes um, already thread taped. If your one doesn't come thread taped though, there is a way to put the thread tape on properly. Um, you go with the thread, so the way it screws on, so it's going to like pull it tight on there. So for this thread, it goes, looking at it that way, it will be anti-clockwise. Because that's, so you're turning it that way, so it's going to run the tape onto the unit and tighten it up and not take it off. So if you run it the other way, as you tighten it, it's going to want to pull off there, see that? So you're anti-clockwise, looking at it that way. So you run the tape on, yeah, anti-clockwise, but you actually turn this clockwise, yeah. All right, so to get this in, it can be a little bit hard because as you're trying to thread it in, the weight of the end there wants to drop down. So we'll see how I go. A little tip, you get your Phillips head screwdriver in on the end there, push it in and that will want to straighten it up a bit and then turn it with your fingers. So I'll see how I go. That's the ticket straight away. Let me just get the spanner on there. Uh, it doesn't have to be ridiculously tight, just a good firm, good firm nip. All right, so that's it, and it's back in. All you gotta do is turn your water back on, use your taps to ensure all the air's out of the tank here. Come back out here, ensure there's no leaks. I'll be also, you know, running it on gas and 240 just to make sure I haven't got water or anything in here while I'm mucking around. They are pretty hardy, they are used to getting a bit of water, so that all should be sweet. I don't oversee any problems there. And I'll just clean up the area here, tidy it all back up. And yeah, we are good to go for another 12 months. I will make a little note inside the van there on my little log um, that when I change it so I do know because it's easy to forget how quickly time goes. And that is it. So, I will see you at the next one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you more for some tips and tricks from Timmy. Catch you guys. Cheers.